local all morning. The Fox 61 Morning News starts now. And we have breaking news right now at 6 o'clock. Route 9 southbound is closed in Cromwell after a crash involving a wrong way driver. And a youth hockey coach fired after an incident caught on camera. It happened during a recent game. What parents are saying in response. Also, more breaking news overnight. Eight people were found dead inside of a home in Utah. Lindsey Kane's in the breaking news center with more on what happened. Uh, good morning. Happy Thursday. Thanks for being with us here at Fox 61 America Arias. And I'm Tim Lammers. Good morning to you. We're going to start with that breaking news we just told you about in Cromwell. A serious crash has shut down the southbound side of Route 9 in Cromwell. Yeah, so let's get straight over to Rachel Piscatelli. She's over in the Fox 61 Traffic Center. Rachel, what can you tell us? Yeah, Erica and Tim, breaking overnight, state police are investigating a wrong way crash that's closed Route 9 south in Cromwell. It happened in the area of exit 18 just before 1 this morning, and we're told serious injuries have been reported. Now, let's take a live look outside where you can see that folks are being detoured off of exit 9. This is actually seen from our... Um, our uh, storm tracker, but this is the live look outside currently at exit nine where folks are being detoured off of exit nine and going to take route three. That would be your best bet getting back on at exit uh, 16. So again, this is going to be route nine southbound. It is closed from exit 18 Main Street to Miller Street due to a wrong way vehicle crash. Now, just moments ago, the East Haddam Swing Bridge reopening this morning. This is video from yesterday. It was closed overnight for the first time last night due to a much needed repair. Just a reminder for folks living in the area for the next two weeks, it will be closed overnight from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. We have more information about the detours in place on Fox 61 and on our Fox 61 news app. Tim and Erica will continue to follow that breaking news out on the roadways. We'll send things back over to you. All right, Rachel, thanks so much for staying on top of it for us. Okay, talking about temperatures out there, Matt yeah, Scott. I was in the 40s up by the Mass border when oh, I left. Yeah. So. Real correction in numbers, and you know, I drove by that accident. Just a terrible thing. So, and I didn't see any fog in that area. I'm not saying that it was or wasn't, you know, had, weather had something to do with the, the elements. They'll investigate that. Let's talk about what we do have out there, which is uh, a noticeable drop in temperatures. Uh, we are talking about the opportunity for uh, still no sunshine, still damp, still dry dreary out there. Rain tonight. Is it going to be a little icy tomorrow morning? We'll talk about that potential. And in the seven day, it looks like a dry seasonal weekend ahead. Area numbers in the 40s, still very warm, but again, uh, you know, so much for those 60s that many of you saw yesterday. Not coming back. I don't see these numbers moving too much today. We have a little uh, precept, mainly off to the north over the Berkshires. Not an issue for us. Our next rain comes in tonight. Let's go overnight. And you will notice high up in the Litchfield Hills, the opportunity for what may be a few icy spots as we go through the morning commute tomorrow. The hill towns of Tolland West, uh, Tolland Windham County as well. Woodstock, Putnam, Pomfret maybe we're dealing with this. And that's part of a front, the second part of this one two punch that is correcting and that will be correcting the temperatures in time for the weekend. Cloudy throughout the day. This is not a great day. And notice the temperatures 44 this morning for the high schoolers, 45 later on as a kids get off the bus. Uh, so the numbers not really moving today. Talk about where they are setting up for the weekend. If we have any big storms in the forecast, stand by. Got that for you coming up in a few minutes. Guys, back to you. All right, Matt, thanks so much. We have some breaking news to tell you about also in Norwich this morning. A house yeah. up in flames late last night, leading to one firefighter having to be rescued. We've got Fox 61's Brooke Griffin live there in Norwich with more on what we know about the fire and that rescue. Brooke, good morning. Well, good morning. I just spoke with the Norwich Fire Battalion chief and he said it was an extremely scary moment when they heard a mayday call coming from one of their own firefighters up on the second floor of this house right here. They say that he ended up getting trapped inside of that house. Battalion chief Mark Benjamin tells me around eight o'clock last night they were called to a house fire here on Norwich Avenue. When they arrived, they found a two family home engulfed in flames. Both Taftville and a Norwich Fire Department 
departments began offensively attacking the fire in hopes of containing it quickly. But he says while a Norwich fire crew was on the second floor of this home, a firefighter got separated from his group. Benjamin tells me the firefighter issued a mayday call when he realized he was too disoriented to find his own way out. The Mohegan Fast Team, a team that's specifically for rescues like this one, was called to the scene to rescue that firefighter. The battalion chief tells me the firefighter got out without any injuries and went right back to work after getting checked out by paramedics. There is only one family living here currently, but they were not inside of the home at the time of the fire. Now, I did speak again with that chief, and he says that the fire marshals are investigating. There is currently no word on a cause of this fire, which is pretty typical. It usually takes them a few days or even weeks to investigate the cause of a house fire like this one. There are still police on scene here, but all of the crews have gone home at this time. Live in Norwich, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61 News. All right, Brooke, Brooke thank thanks you. so much. We will check back throughout the morning. Meantime, at 6.05, a Connecticut youth hockey coach has been fired after a video surfaced of an incident that happened this past weekend. It happened during a tournament in New Hampshire where a South Windsor team was playing a team from Massachusetts. Now, video of the game shows the man reach over the boards, grab an opposing player by the collar, and then pull him down to the ice. You just saw it there, right in the middle of play. Now, that man was ejected from the game, but players, coaches, and parents were all stunned and shocked at what they just witnessed. My son is a wonderful kid, a great player, sweet, kind, and the fact that he was assaulted, bullied by this man, it's just really, really eye-opening and disappointing. Whether it was my son out there or anybody else's, it's disgusting. I was horrified that that happened to to somebody. Well, Fox 61 reached out to South Windsor Youth Hockey for comment on the incident. The president of the association confirmed the coach has been fired and has been forbidden from coaching in any and all association events. Now, the association president went on to say, quote, I would like to apologize to the affected player, his parents, coaches, teammates, and spectators, as this type of action is not indicative of our organization and what we strive to be. We strongly oppose and are offended by this type of action. And we're following some breaking news coming out of Utah this morning. A tragic story. Officials say a family of eight, including five children, were shot to death inside their home. Yeah, Fox 61's Lindsey Kane is at our breaking news center here with more on what their uh, police in Utah are saying. Lindsey, good morning. Hi, good morning. Well, a shocking update out of Utah. Police say they were responding to a welfare check on the family in Enoch City, which is about 200 miles south of Salt Lake City. And that's when police found all eight bodies with gunshot wounds inside their home. Now, welfare check is usually done when someone hasn't been seen or heard from for an extended period of time. But at this time, police don't believe there's any threat to the public in that area. Police have said all eight people are within one family, but we're still waiting for police to release their names and ages. Police have not released any sort of motive for the killings and have no suspects at this time. The family was found by police yesterday evening. Now, officials say the town of Enoch only has about 8,000 people. Because it's a small, close-knit town, officials say the whole town is mourning their losses, and residents are shocked to see something like this happen in their quiet area. Investigators say it could take days or longer to figure out a motive or identify any potential suspects. Stick with Fox 61 on air online and on Fox 61 Plus for the latest information on this case. Tim and Erica, back over to you. All right, Lindsay, thank you. Also, uh, breaking news this morning out of the Vatican City, a mass was held inside St. Peter's Basilica for the late uh, Pope Benedict XVI. Tens of thousands of people attended that funeral of the former pope this morning as mourners said goodbye to the Pope Emeritus. Uh, this funeral coming after Pope Benedict lay in state for three days inside the Basilica. Over 100,000 people came to pay their respects during that time, with many of them traveling from far, far away just for a chance to say a quick prayer and say goodbye.